Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 112, we're going to take a look at PCBs, what they are and why quality matters. And before I forget, a big thank you to everyone who helped make our Black Friday sale a huge success. We processed lots of discounts and of course, this is our way of saying thank you to all of our great customers. And first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, PCBs, or what they're more properly called, printed circuit boards, or just boards, are integral to all of our audio equipment. So why waste time looking at them? Well, because they both connect up the components and carry the audio signal so that we have great sound. Now, a cheap, poorly laid out board is going to perform board poorly. And a well laid out, quality made board will handle the circuit and signal without loss or noise. And that that's really important. You want a low noise circuit. Now Charles does all of our PCB design work so I'll let him show you what makes for a quality board and he's going to walk you through some of his designs. Okay so I love doing the PCB design work. I find it's really rewarding and interesting and the first thing that we're going to take a look at here is actually one of our third generation boards that just came in. This is our latest version of our power supply board that we use in all of our dual mono designs. We've added a couple of extra features on here that I'll talk about in a minute, but just going over real quick the kinds of things that we do with all of our boards to make them good. Let's start off with how thick they are. We make these as thick as possible so they don't flex whenever you're installing tubes. We make sure the copper layers on the tops and bottoms are as thick as they can be, at least from our manufacturer, there are two ounce copper. And we build all the pads to be larger than they need to be to make them easier to solder onto. And also make the traces as wide as possible for low resistance and great conductivity. Now some of the more unique features to this board here is that we've added an extra output stage with an extra dropping resistor on the power supply. So you can actually bring two different voltages out from this board or add an extra filter stage in here. Or even in the case of the GU50 monoblock kit amp, you can bring out the same voltage from two different junctions. So this has added some great functionality to this board. And um, oh, one more feature on it here. It's double-sided for the labels. You'll see this is side A, and there's side B. And we've, we've done it this way so that you can have two boards side by side with the junctions pointing in the correct directions. And that makes it super easy to build on. So that's the first one here. Now with the rest of our boards, we've come up with basically two different standards that we like to use. We have our actual kit production boards which are a simplified layout, lots of spacing around the components, way less complicated looking. And these we designed to be as easy to build on as possible, as well as having all the great benefits of having an isolated signal path, keeping the heater, here's the heater traces right here, away from anything, especially the signal, as well as the B plus away from everything. So this is one of our easy to build on kit production boards. And this is what it was developed off of, which is one of our universal development boards for octals. And you can tell this guy is quite a bit more complicated and we've got a whole bunch of jumpers, way more components on both sides of it. It's keeping a lot of the same design philosophy of the other board where we're trying to keep the signal path elevated and keep anything with noise away from that. Sorry, a single path isolated, not elevated. <laughs> but this makes development work so much faster and easier for us because we can pop one of these boards out of our supply, put a bunch of components on there, and test how the circuit is going to run. And we can configure it for all sorts of different circuits here with a dual triode. Yeah, and those are standard dual-sided boards, right? I mean, years ago when I first started building stuff, 
Everybody worked off of just a single-sided board. And now our supplier can supply... Up to four layers. I think they call them quad boards, don't they? Yep. There'll be one layer on each side and two internal to it. Now, we don't use those. We only use a double-sided because that's all we've needed so far. But it is a possibility in the future. And you've got some pretty pictures to show everybody. Yeah. So whenever I'm working on these boards, this is the kind of view that I get. Here is an example of... This board that we were just looking at here. Let me back you up just a little tiny bit. I'll try not to reflect the light into the camera here too. <laughs> but you can see here the red traces are the ones on the top, the blue are on the bottom, and we like to do things like this where we bridge components on the other side of the board with other components. And that way we can try and keep things as separated as possible and keep something like this signal path. You can see here it goes into the ca capacitor on this end and then jumps over the traces here. And which, then, are, which are on the other side of the board. Yeah. So it, it keeps it as far away from anything that could possibly cause noise or interfere with it. And that means that these boards are dead quiet and easy to build on. Yeah, I think the only comment we ever get from kit builders is that, wow, these boards are great, Charles. <laughs> yeah, and we had a little bit of fun with them too. As you can see here, we even put our little Melatone Kits logo on here as traces embedded in the board. So it, it pops out and looks pretty neat. Yeah. And, it, you know, the boards aren't just handy for beginner kit builders. I use them all the time in prototype work because it just speeds up the, the work so much. It means that I have a, a guaranteed quiet circuit and they're easy to modify. But those more complex universal boards, if Charles didn't make me a complete schematic for all the routes that I could possibly follow i'd be completely lost well speaking of that let's take a quick look at it here there it is this is the octal universal and you can see that it is just a visual jumble but trust me this all makes sense in the circuit and this makes the development work just go so much faster whenever we're trying to come up with a new octal circuit wow okay well thanks for all of that charles all right so what's been going on over at melatone kits well we've got Good news and bad, bad news. Should we give them the good news first? Yeah, let's go with the good news first. Well, the good news is we're starting to ship kits to GU50 monoblock test builders. And the bad news is that the power transformer is so large in its box that it actually doesn't fit in our universal shipping box. So we have to order in some taller boxes. Luckily, our supplier is amazing. And we'll have them in in a couple of days, and, and out the door those will go. And it's been a huge task, always a huge task, getting the, to this point where we're actually shipping a new kit app, a new type of kit app. And we still have room for a couple of more test builders. So if you want to jump in and build a, a great-sounding, pure class A, monoblock kit app, give us a sh drop us a line and we'll see if you're going to be a good fit. And you don't need to build two monoblocks. I know they're expensive. You can buy one now, build it as a test builder, and buy another one in a couple of months when they're more when you can afford it. Okay. Now, so that was that's the good news. What's the bad news? Oh, uh, the bad news is is that we're still working on the headphone amplifier. And speaking of PCBs, What's holding us up at this point is that the original prototype was all done using point-to-point -point wiring. And, and there's nothing wrong with point-to-point -point wiring. In fact, high-quality kit amps can either be completely point-to-point -point wired, which is not going to be conducive for a kit, or they can be hybrids in which you're partly part of the components are point-to-point -point wired, and part are mounted on quality PCBs, which is how we design all of our kit amps. Mm -hmm. But where it's holding us up with the headphone amp is that we're trying to tweak things, but because of how complicated it is, and because we built it in such a small chassis that isn't going to be the final one... Well, hang on. Who built it in such a small well, chassis? I did. Okay, so it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no blame here, but... Uh, just, I just want to set the record straight. Yeah, so we're trying to tweak it, and it's just it's difficult to do with point-to-point -point wiring, but with one of these boards, in our experience, it's so much easier and so much faster. So we're, we're in development on a board for that uh, kit right now, at least for, development, or for developing it. And that'll probably turn out to be the grandfather to what will be the final production 
board, right? For right. The, for the headphone so kit. So it's going to inform on the final kit one, just like how this one is a much more simplified version for the Octal. Right. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to seeing what will essentially be, be prototype build number two, right? Yep. So we're going to be making another prototype, and then after that, hopefully we'll have the first production um, ones uh, ready to go. Yeah, it's just taking a lot longer than we thought. So let's get these off of here. Okay, well, what came in? Well, not just this week, but what's been coming in for weeks is a lot of 12SL7s. Now, what is the 12SL7? Well, it's essentially a 6SL7 with a 12-volt heater or a 12-volt filament. Now, what is a 6SL7 then, you might ask? Well, that's the granddaddy to the high gain or high mu 12AX7. So why is any of this important? Well, because I'm working on prototype number two, phono preamp, that will eventually hopefully be a kit amp. And the first one was built two Christmases ago. Between Christmas and New Year's is my favorite time. I normally build at least one prototype in that time period just because it's so quiet the store is quiet the house is quiet and I can focus and really build quickly and in order to have a chance at at listening to a prototype build I need as many sample tubes in that type as possible so the 6SL7 tube the vintage tube is a high demand tube they're very expensive um, the premium ones I sell almost as soon as they come in. So the 12SL7 though is the same tube and it's a very low demand tube and we can still find tubes going all the way back to the very first years of production. New old stock, new in the box. So that's what we've been doing. We've been collecting them for the kit amp. Let's take a look at a few of them. Here's a fairly early RCA. It's got the silver label and it's got a smoke dome. You can't really see the plates. When it comes to RCA tubes, the 6SN7, the 6SL7, the 12 volt version as well, everybody really prefers the earlier silver label type. And that holds true for a lot of tubes. The earlier, the better in many cases. Look at this one. This is another smoked glass tube. The smoke, smoke on the inside is meant to reduce electrical interference and it was really very common in early radio tubes and as time went on I think it was an expensive process and manufacturers just slowly dropped it so these are all early tubes and this is the tongue saw isn't that a beauty this is also a new old stock new in the box 12 SL7 I've never heard the 6 SL7 version of this tube so I don't know what it sounds like but if it's anything like the 6SN7, which is an amazing tube, this could be a real great sounding tube in a phono preamp. What else have I got? Well, this is one of my favorite 6SL7s. Well, this is the 12SL7 version ever made. This is the Sylvania. This is the first generation. And if you know your Sylvania 6SN7s, you know it looks an awful lot like the first generation GT or bad boy. Uh, the plates are different, they're oval. High gain tubes tended to have these oval or rounded plates because the rounding of the plate gives a natural ability for a higher gain tube. That was invented way back at the beginning of the tube era and the mu or gain of the 12 SL7s is 70. And that puts it definitely into a high gain category. In fact, these were the high gain twin triodes of their day. So from about 1940 on. It was only later on that the 12AX7 essentially took over the duty. As tubes got smaller, of course, then the extra gain from 70 to 100 with the 12AX7 was an advantage as well. And look at that waste chrome. That's your bad boy chrome. And way down there is a big plate getter. So it's not surprising that the 6SL and presumably the 12SL7 sound amazing. They were built at the same time as the bad boys and with the same materials on the same line. So a whole bunch of these came in. And I think this is going to be one of the great tubes in the phono preamp. 
Last but not least is a mil spec 12SL7 made by Sylvania, a brown base. And I only know this tube as its 6SN7 GT um, cousin, which I've got, I was lucky enough, I found a whole pile of them from 1967. And in fact, we sent out um, the we sent the test builders for the Universal 6 or 12 SN7 preamp. We sent them all out 12 SN7, the, tw the SN7 version of this tube. And I was getting comments back saying, wow, Jim, <laughs> you sent us a premium, premium tubes with this, with, uh, with our, our test kit. And I said, well, we want the we want the test builders to have the best sounding kits possible. I mean, we want good reviews in the store, right? So um, that's, it's just a thing. And of course we send free tubes to test builders because we want to thank them for their work. And I haven't heard this tube as the 12 SL7. And I'm really hopeful if this is, sounds anything like the 12 SN7 version, this is going to be an amazing tube. I just wish I could have found a lot more of them. They're fairly rare. You don't see them very often. Okay, well if you stay to the very end, here's some discount codes to help you out. We've got flat rate shipping around the world of $20. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the orders, the shipping's on us folks. Stay safe everyone. Have fun. This is Jim and Charles signing off. Cheers, everyone.